George Moore read the Bible, uh, not just in the morning, but he read it through, and he read it through uh, about four times a year. Um, and he'd read every verse because he didn't want to kind of be accused of, you know, shopping about. And um, as, as he was in, in the very early stages before he began the work at, at uh, Wilson Street, um, which is the first house, which is just off the M32, if you know Bristol on the right hand side as you come into the city. Um, he had become convinced that um, that God, what this was the will of God to, to reach out to the orphans. But, but he was reading Psalm 68 and uh, he, he, he came, so he came um, sorry, Psalm 81, and he came to this verse, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open your, wide mouth, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And in modern parlance, he, he nearly fell off his chair when he read this. Uh, I'll quote from the sermon that he gave just before he died. He, he said these words, when I read this verse, I shut the Bible. I went to the door of my room and locked it. Then I cast myself on the floor and began to pray. I said to my Heavenly Father, I've only asked thee, Heavenly Father, that thou show me whether I should begin the orphan work or not. And thou hast been pleased to make that plain to me. And now I will open my mouth, be pleased to fill it. When he realized he hadn't asked God for anything, he just sought God whether this was his will. And then he asked God for three things. He said, give me, Heavenly Father, a house to begin the work, suitable helpers to take care of the children, and give me a thousand pounds in sterling to make a beginning. You might think a thousand pounds, it's a lot of money, isn't it? But it's not that much money. Um, but that's today. In the 1830s, um, actually, I did a little calculation using the Bank of England calculator, putting value for goods then today. He's actually asking for a hundred thousand pounds, probably more. And uh, that's a, that's that's for, for pretty much I think all of us that's a significant amount of money. And yet he asks for it. He says, you know, if 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 you could bring Israel out of Egypt, um, and you say, open my mouth and I will fill it. And this became a key a key text for him in his life, open my mouth wide uh, and I will fill it. And, and in his sermon at the end of his life, he, he encourages people to ask God for, for everything and anything. If you're in any want in, in your family or in, in your business or in spiritual warfare, he says, open your mouth and I will fill it. Mm -hmm. And um, he emphasizes the fact that we open our mouth, which means we ask, but then he emphasizes, but God will fill it. So we don't look to ourselves to meet the need, but that God meets the need. And he also says, don't be worried that if it takes some time, because God promised to fill it. And sometimes he wants to change our heart attitude in the process. The story is probably well known. Um, uh, people offered to help. He made known the fact he was starting this work. He never asked for money, but he did tell people what he was doing. And the money slowly bit by bit started to come in and th there was a day when and this was so like uh, this example was repeated many many times in his life that that somebody who had no money or apparently had no money came to him with what they had and uh, this lady came with a check for a hundred pounds which would be equivalent to ten thousand pounds and she was a seamstress and very poorly paid and, and he actually said to her you you know you mustn't give me this money it's not right that you give me this money you know and, and, but she persuaded him that this was an inheritance that she had paid her father's debts and she really wanted to give this money and so eventually he took it and he got to the thousand pounds and he began um he opened the orphanage he was led to the house and the day came when um it was time to receive some orphans and and um what you might not know is that he only accepted um, orphans for people that both parents had died. And he only accepted orphans, strangely, if the parents had been married. Now, we would think that was quite strange today. Um, so he appointed a time and he went to uh, his office and he waited. Uh, he waited an hour. No orphans had come. He went in another hour. No, and after the third hour, he went home really quite troubled that no orphans had come. Um, and he got before the Lord and he realized that 
he hadn't asked God for any orphans, even though there were hundreds of orphans on the streets. And he repented and he came and, and said to the Lord, Lord, I haven't asked you to send the orphans. And so the next day he went back and um, there were orphans or, or parents or, or sorry, adults waiting to, to have the, to sponsor these orphans. And uh, over 40 were there, even though the house could take 30. So right from the very beginning, he understood in everything um, he should ask God for things and, and take nothing for granted. And, and that was also a key for his life. Mm. That's great, Tony. What a story. What amazing stories. Um, uh, as you know, we, I think as yourself, have been going through the Psalms during this, uh, this lockdown period yes. and found great inspiration, as I think Muller did as well. Um, and I think from talking to you earlier, you had, uh, uh, there was another uh, scripture from a Psalm uh, that yes. was uh, particularly inspiring for Muller. Yeah. The, 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 there were certain texts, and I've said, shared one which is synonymous with him, and um, open my, your mouth wide and I will fill it, was a key one for him. It, it, it was though God had spoken that into, um, into his life, and, and, and he realised that even as we see in nature little chicks this time of year opening their mouths wide and, and the mother bird and constantly just, just filling it up, and, and the chick opened up, and that's how God has asked us to pray. But um, there's a particular name by which God is known. Um, and it's, it's, it's become synonymous with um, this work. Uh, it's in Psalm 68. Um, and it says, a, the, it says um, a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. And um, that became a really significant verse for, for George Muller. Because he realized, uh, and this was a really significant key to, to, to the work, that this was God's work and that God is the heavenly father that cares for the children. And he learned the secret of casting that care upon the heavenly father. And this might seem strange to you and to me in, in, our, in our modern world, but he cast the concern onto the father to such an extent that he wasn't anxious. Although he took care of, of, of up to 2000 orphans um, at a time, and that requires huge amounts of money on, on a daily basis. Um, he, because he'd learned this secret of, of, of casting his care upon God and, and trusting in the Lord that he was the father of the fatherless, he didn't live in anxiety. He, he, he didn't live in fret um, as, as the Psalm that um, refers to delighting in the Lord uh, begins, do not fret. It is a do not fret because of evil men. Uh, it goes on in verse three, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. And then it says, delight yourself in the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do it. And, and George Muller took this word of God um, at its face value. Um, Psalm uh, 9 verse 10 says that they that know thy name will put their trust in you. And, and he saw that one of God's names was the father to the fatherless. And, and this, this title, this name that God revealed himself as the father, really carried him in, in his work. Uh, uh, let me quote from, again, George Molly. He says, by the help of God, this shall be my argument before him. I love that. This shall be my argument before him, respecting the orphans in the hour of need. He is a father and therefore has pledged himself, as it were, to provide for them. I have only to remind him of the need of these poor children in order for it to be supplied. Mm. And, and that's the way George Muller saw this. It was his responsibility to remind God, if not that God needed reminding, um, of the need of these poor children. And um, this, this particular biography goes on to say that this is translating the promises of God's word, not into, into praying, but in living and doing. Blessed was the hour when Mr. Muller learned that one of God's chosen names is father of the fatherless. And we often pray that uh, in, in, in trust in, in, in the charity today, uh, reminding God that he is the father to the fatherless because Lots of the ministry that supports, goes around the world, does support uh, orphans. Uh, 
one of the trustees that I was there, um, who's since retired, used to say that through the missionary around the world, more orphans today are being supported than they were in those days. Mm. Um, wow. But because there's such great need in, in, in the world. So there's still a very relevant, very relevant uh, verse. He's the father of the fatherless. That's who he is. He's your heavenly father. And that's how Jesus revealed him to us, didn't he? That, that he's our father in heaven. Mm. So he, he says these words, by the grace of God, there is no cause of anxiety to me. These children I've cast upon the Lord, the whole work is his, and it becomes me to be without carefulness in whatever points I'm lacking in this point, I'm able by the grace of God to roll the burden upon my heavenly father. And if you met George Muller, you wouldn't find someone that was weighed down with anxiety with this responsibility because he was delighted in God and, and this burden had been rolled over onto the heavenly father, the father to the fatherless. And, and that's taking God at his word, which just in conclusion, just say that was the chief motivation of him. Although he was very burdened for the orphans and really wanted to do something for them, his chief motivation was to glorify God that people should know that God still answers prayer and, and that he can be trusted at, at his work. Um, and so it's a remarkable testimony. It, it, it's, it's, it's a Bristol miracle. And our prayer as, as a trust is that the story will go on inspiring people around the world to, um, to put their trust in God and to believe him at his word and to take him at his word mm. and to see that he is able to do these things mm. so it's it's been a real joy to share a couple of the those stories with you and, and i've been listening to some of joe's um, videos and and and, and, and delighted to um, to see because one of our visions of the charity is is that this story should be better known in this country a lot of our visitors uh, we have a visitors book come from south korea <laughs> come from uh, other parts of europe come from america um, but we really want to make this story known. And I think opening this new museum, getting school children to come in uh, will, 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 will captivate their interest. Mm. I, I had the joy to go to, to India um, a couple of years ago and um, uh, uh, to help in a wedding to, to officiate. And um, I met somebody afterwards because I was introduced as uh, the, uh, the, trust, uh, the treasurer of George Muller Trust. And, and one of the people said to me afterwards, you don't need to tell us about the story of George Muller. Everybody in the church here, we know about this story. It's inspiring us. Uh, and that's over 100 years later, after 110, 20 years after he died. So uh, let this story of, of God's faithfulness really inspire you to pray and, and, and believe and trust God. And um, it's a real example to me that George Muller never seemed to be in a hurry. Mm. Um, <laughs> whenever I sense what God is doing, I want to do it yesterday or today, but but that wasn't his way. He he he, he walked in a very methodical and careful way, and and everything was prayed through, and everything was uh, was thought through as well. And um, that's a real example to us. Fantastic, Tony. Um, I wonder whether uh, you could um, pray uh, pray for us. Lord, we see the simplicity in nature all around us of um, young chicks and young in their nest at this time of year, just, just opening their mouth wide and how the parent birds just constantly fly in and fly out and, and, and fill their mouths. And you, Lord, say to us to do this, that, that you are the God that, um, that took us out of of egypt you, you you took us out from a very great dark place and you've asked us as your children to, to to open our mouths which means to bring things to you in prayer to to ask you for things uh, like children like chicks as it were and and lord i just pray for for us all listening in right now that we'll have a renewed uh energy and 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 faith just just to lift things to you in prayer and jesus says that the father knows what we need even before we ask him yet he seems to want us to ask him he he, he says give us this day our daily bread he, he wants us to pray about everything he wants that relationship and that fellowship 
and the faith that comes through prayer. So, Father, we just pray as your church, as your people, that we'll have a simplicity that just says, we'll open our mouths, Lord. We'll make our requests known to you in the confidence, Lord, that you have promised to provide and to fill our mouths. And we pray that in and through Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.